we all have our own journeys and we all have our own destiny or whatever life mission that we're supposed to do here. You got to learn and figure out who you are. Once you, when you figure out who you are, like as a being, as an energetic soul, who are you and what are you doing here? All of a sudden, like none of this other matrix illusion stuff is important. What's important is what's in your soul, being in gratitude, coming back to like who you are, why you're here, what is your purpose, and what can you do for others? When we talk about love, that is a tone. But that's not just a tone. It's like everything. It's literally like the tone and the energy that has created everything. It is this love tone frequency that has built everything. It's all literally coded by love. It is the only force in the universe. We're not separate. Nothing is separate. And once you understand what and who you are and who designed you and where you came from, you will have the highest peak level of gratitude and love and nothing can touch that welcome, welcome home, home to, to the, the loving consciously, consciously podcast my name is amorous and my name is eric and if you are like us nobody, nobody taught, taught you how to love. love we are best friends and life partners here to vulnerably and authentically share our journey while exploring the sacred realms of love consciousness, relationships, spirituality, and all that they encompass. The intention of this show is to help you consciously relate to yourself, others, and everything else in this universe. Together, we can embody a more intentional and fulfilling way of giving and receiving love. Loving, Loving consciously. consciously. Through eight years together, we have had the opportunity to overcome deep patterning and programming, as well as trauma related to mental health, addiction, pregnancy loss, infidelity, and immense grief. After six years of experiencing these challenges with no knowledge on how to heal or love each other, we separated. After us both spiritually awakening and recommitting, we formed our conscious partnership and have spent the last two years cultivating a divine union founded on unconditional love, devotion, and commitment to personal growth. Thank you for joining us and doing the work alongside us as we explore this beautiful world of love and consciousness to co-create a new world of love. As you courageously walk this path, remember to have grace with yourself and know that you have both the capacity to love consciously and the power to always, always choose, choose love. Namaste and welcome back to the Loving Consciously podcast. Today we have a very special guest with us. We are so excited to have Drew here with us today. Drew is the founder of many things, including Cosmic Light Force, Higher Self Made, Star Seed Fuel, and Power Immunity. And we are really honored to have you here today, Drew. So first and foremost, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thank yeah. You. Yeah, yeah, the honor's ours. Well, we're going to get really, really deep into you and your story and all that you're offering to to humanity right now. And also get really deep into, you know, we've been talking a little bit offline about everything that's going on right now because it's it's here, it's potent. We're in the storm, you know, energetically, spiritually, politically. And, you know, talk a little bit about that and, and give people some love, some hope, some advice and hopefully through this conversation, elevate the consciousness just a little bit more on how we're navigating through this. Before we get into that, though, I'd love to ask you, as we ask all of our guests, what does loving consciously look like in your life? Um, well, thanks for having me again. And uh, loving consciously, um, I, I feel like it's a very effortless flow, at least um for the conscious uh, uh, folks. And um, it's just a, um, a heart and mind coherence, I guess, you know, it's just a, um, it's like how you play beautiful music and I'm not like, um, I, I don't play mu music or instruments and and, uh, and stuff, but you can appreciate it. You know, you can hear somebody banging on some drums or, or whatever, play some kind of instruments and it's horrible. And it's and uh, it sounds very really off and it's bad and stuff. But then when we have somebody else that knows how to play it, it's like beautiful music. And um, and I think loving consciously um, 
and living consciously is 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 a, a form of flow where things are very harmonic or harmonious um in a sense where everything just kind of like flows in your life um even when there's turbulence you can kind of like release surrender and 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 just flow and observe um until the storm is over so that's honestly a really beautiful answer this is usually my favorite part of doing interviews because we've had a lot of really great people on here you know double digits and every answer is so different they all bring their own little sauce we've never had anyone compare it to mind heart coherence and that is really beautiful so thank you for bringing that I would love to dive into you you and your story now, you can get as deep and as vulnerable as you want. We love vulnerability here on this show, but I'd really like love for you to share with our listeners, you know, who Drew is and how you got to this place that you are and being such a, I feel, important and respected person in this space. Well, well, well thank you. Um, I probably won't dive too, too, too deep into it, but like a quick summary, I... Um, I had my first awakening, I think, in 2012, when a very close friend, sort of like a brother slash business partner, and my co-writer um, passed away. And um, and I was like kind of like walking around thinking about what happened. He died from a, um, a drug overdose, heroin. And I didn't even know he did heroin. And um, so it was just like, just just shocks just all the way around and um and then i was really like almost upset that i didn't know what happened exactly what happened and um and i wonder um it happened like in early early of um 2012 and then um i just kind of like buried myself and went into like this whole state of shock and anger and sadness and throw all the emotions. And by the end of um, 2012, around the holidays, I found myself like walking around Hollywood, just screaming, like one of those crazy people, like in, in, in Hollywood, you see at nighttime, just talking to themselves. And I'm just like yelling out like, what? I'm like, his name is Andy. And and and, uh, and I was like, Andy, how, like, how can I not know what happened to you? It's just like this mystery. And, and it did sit well with me. And, and I'm just screaming. Um, as I was walking back to my my place in uh, in Hollywood at the time, and uh, and sure enough, in two days, maybe like less than two days, like the next day or the definitely like within two days, um, I still had a Facebook account, and I got a text or a DM on Facebook from one of his friends, um, this this girl that was also writing with him. Uh, we we did a lot of writing back in the days, and. Um, and she hit me up and said that um, she wanted to talk to me. And when I met up with her, she was the one that told me, like, she did heroin with him, like the how, how he got started. And that's a whole other story for, like, another time because it really started with, like, him going to the hospital in, um, in, in, in Hollywood for, like, for like like a foot injury or something like that. Then they gave him like some some kind of like antibiotics and some kind of like medicine. Gave him a stomach virus. From there, it, it just it just tumbled, and then they gave him morphine, and then he got addicted to heroin, and he was just like miserable. And 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 I, we we had a lot of projects at the time. I was traveling a whole lot overseas too, so we was kind of like missing each other and stuff. And um, he would never tell tell me and, and and even like um he never had no tracks on his arms he shot up on, on you know through through um by his foot by between his toes so i never saw that but the, the whole story about that is i got my answer and i got my answer from 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 his friend and it just it just kind of like dawned on me but it still didn't click like this living consciousness quantum realm that we're in um until 2015 like years later and um and i had a little pleiadian experience um and i never even heard of pleiadians at the time and 
it just came down to me and, and um and uh from 2012 to 15 like i i crashed hard i uh from the economy crash i lost some houses i lost i lost a lot of a lot of things financially and i hit rock bottom i hit rock bottom and uh by 15 i was kind of like just keeping my nose above water and um after the whole pleiadian thing happened um my ability to manifest just shot and between 2016 to 2017 i made the most money i ever did in my whole entire life and like 2017 i bought like a, a multi-million dollar house i did all this i got myself just just back on 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 everything but then my awakening has really grown by then and i, I started writing on instagram um consciousness and, and quantum and all these alien stuff and um on instagram and um uh it, I started getting a following from there and and my business was growing and the, the awakening was like the red pills was now coming into me from 2016 and 17, really, especially like after 17, really after like Trump, the, the whole Trump thing, which my lawyer I, I, uh, uh, um, really like opened my eyes on, on, on the whole political realm in Washington, D.C. and the corruption and just... And then like all these dots was just coming in like really, really fast connecting. And um, and I'm watching the whole Trump thing. Um, and by 2018, I had to disconnect from everything. I, I just like completely like checked out the matrix. And I walked away from my cannabis in, uh, uh, licenses and projects and and film projects. Uh, I was executive producer on on, on some uh, brand new shows um, that I funded, and and it was it was a lot. And and people thought, well, my friends around me thought I was just completely like crazy, which now they're coming back to realize all the stuff I was because I was ratting off like the whole everything is sat satanist pedophiles in Hollywood and all this <laughs> stuff that sounded crazy. And now it's, you know, like, like dots are starting to connect with my very liberal LA, California friends. Um, so I, I, I checked out the matrix 2018 and I was looking into more spiritual um, or businesses that were aligned to me and um, or aligned with like, like the new me. And uh, I still didn't find anything, and I was just like, just kind of like traveling around and just, just, just figuring out who I am, and um, and, and what am I gonna do now from from this point on? Um, so 2018 and 19, I was just kind of like moving around, figuring things out, and um, and then when 2020 hit, um, I was I was actually in the UK in London like the first week of January. And I was talking to a bunch of my guys. These are like banker guys and finance guys. And we had like all these like projects lined up and I had like all this stuff, you know, coming in. And and, and I wasn't, I was still wasn't sure. Like I really want to dive into like new projects, finance and big money stuff. And, uh, but they were just coming to me. So I'm just observing everything and seeing what flows. Um, that didn't happen because of COVID. And when COVID hit, um, everything just kind of like clicked. And I, I knew that, uh, well, I, I, I figured out like COVID was a big lie, like pretty early on. Like when it hit here in, in, in March, by, by April, I was like, oh, this is what's going on. <laughs> and I was dishing like all this stuff out on Instagram getting heavily sh shadow banned. I was kind of already shadow banned because of the cannabis stuff. And, and it's, and it's really weird because there's certain cannabis pages on Instagram that were like just blown up, like just huge. And then over here is like, you know, I post a picture was with like of, of a grow and, you know, I, I get, I get the red flags. It's, it gets deleted, you know, all these things. But when COVID came, I was getting like super heavily, uh, 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 
shadow ban and stuff. And I was like just telling everybody I'm texting. Um and uh I had I had some of those um I because of cannabis, I was already like into holistic medicine and herbs and C B D and um just just helping just helping people uh from at least even from like 2015 on we was doing stuff for like veterans. We was doing stuff for AIDS patients, can cancer patients, kids with epilepsy, um, just terminally ill kids, um, getting CBD uh, uh, products for, uh, for people and, and uh, doing a lot of, um, doing a lot of like um, nonprofit type, type uh, things. And that was like kind of like making me feel real, really good aside from like just you know just doing like just business stuff with with my guys that was kind of like my offshoot things that i was kind of like doing with like other people over here besides like you know just business um and corporate stuff um so uh when 2020 came along i it, it really get, became clear to me i was actually really excited for the fact that it, it, i felt like like this was my calling. Like I'm like, this is it. This is where you go to work. This is what you got to do. You know, um, uh, uh, let people know exactly what's going on. Information, and then go distribute some uh, some medicine because I was able to source because of these last few years. I was traveling all around. I was able to source all these like really cool herbs and spices and and medicine and capsules for mushrooms and CBD and like like all these kind of things. So I just went and grabbed the whole bunch. And 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 during summer of 2020, I was like delivering medicine, homeopathic medicine, um, um, toilet paper, even waters, you know, like pe people. Were, yeah, like, the toilet people, paper. <laughs> people in Hollywood, like didn't have toilet paper, like all the 7-Elevens, all the Target, the Ralphs, and nobody had toilet paper. And it was, it was crazy. And I, like, and, and I was pretty, like, I was pretty stocked up and, and, and and the other thing about this toilet paper, like you, you can go buy a little bidet from Amazon even, and I don't not promoting Amazon, but you can get it there and it's like $30. You don't need no toilet paper in case, you know, like you don't have it. But anyways, um, so I did that and um and and then like I I got like really like burned out by the end of summer. And then we had the whole riots thing, and I gotta tell people about BLM and the whole race baiting thing. And it, it, it was very, very uh, emotionally and, and, and intense. And uh, and I got really, really tired because uh, I was just going hard. And everybody, I was just like, just just red pilling, medicine, driving all around. Um, so uh, yeah, by end of summer, I was like, just really, really drained. And, um, and I'm texting people all the time, like, and these, you know, the, the herbs, ashwagandha and gluathions and, you know, um, uh, I'm, I'm drawing like turmeric and uh, these are long words. And 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 you and not only you have to text them, you got to tell them what it is, tell them how to take it, tell them what's in it, you know, like like all these things, the detoxes and blah, blah. so it's, it's, a, it's a lot to type. So then I had to create like little flyers and or or like you know little memes or something like that and send that out and then even that was like a whole lot because all of a sudden I went from like texting five people a day to like 30, 40 people a day and all this and and everybody's like oh my mom is sick and this person is sick and that is that my daughter and this, like all kind of stuff was was uh was coming up and um so then I created a website and um and I just went through and I, we spoke about this earlier I just went through my little um list of domains that I had and um and in the beginning I was just sending products out as just a generic label because I would just get like the raw stuff and we would even make our own capsules um at times and 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 I'll get other people to make Irish sea mosses and just just everything you know just all together and sending them as as packages um and my my background i am a designer i, I designed uh for like 20 some plus years have my own little design company um and uh so i just created a brand and that's where star c fuel came from because i just had that name uh uh, uh and that's where 
um what a name self, to have <laughs> higher self made I, I actually higher self made i thought it would be a cool clothing brand and mm -hmm. that was something i I, uh, I thought about and then um and then i got attacked and i had to separate the cbd stuff from the supplement stuff and um so and I was like, all right, higher self made is now a CBD brand or a CBD site, and um, and uh, and Power Immunity was actually a, a a good friend of mine. He passed away in 2019. Um, he was a a really awesome scientist and um, and a formulator, and he created this formulation that he didn't want to get patent because you have to give up the recipe once you patent something, and he didn't want to give that up and. Um, and uh, it's 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 one of the best medicines he um, he created to to um, combat like shingles and flus and and even herpes and it worked really really well for herpes and he was going up against all these pharmaceutical brands and companies and I I think he got crushed and and I think over the years with the stress and the financial stuff and just you know just trying to run a pharmaceutical company is pretty intense and there's a lot a whole lot of holistic doctors in the last several decades, like thousands of them by now, like Dr. Savy, they, 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 they just get, you know, suicide and disappeared and, you know, accidents happen and stuff like that. And, um, and uh, he, he passed away in 2019 and, uh, and um, it was, it, it, it was, it was something that I've been taking since 20, 2015 or even 14, like, so almost 10 years now. And, it is a it is a flu medicine. Um, it is it, it, it just combats against um, any kind of uh, virus, uh, anti uh antiviral, homeopathic uh, med, and it's you know you put it under your tongue and you know and then every year I would get sick because I was running around eating not not eating really great and stuff and and um, and then once one time when I finally met him and I introduced to him we became good friends and he gave me this. And uh, and I took it, and um, one day I'm back up, and I was like, "Wow, this stuff really works." I gave it to my family, I gave it to my kids, I gave it to my business partners, and sure enough, everybody that's ever been sick took it, um, got better, and I just kept it for myself. I would just buy a big box uh, from him wholesale, and I would just keep it for myself. And when 2019 came along, um, and when he passed away, um, I just didn't want the um, uh, the business to go out, the 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 company to go under. So um, so I licensed the the formulation from them, and uh, I got a worldwide uh, worldwide rights uh, licensing uh, from from his daughter now, who I think runs the company. I'm not I'm not sure, um, but I got that, and um, and um, and I just found a name, Power Immunity. So, some real quick <laughs> and uh designed the label and by 20 by 2020 by the end of 2020 i had i had um i had everything designed out and and uh and then we launched we launched star c fuel uh by 2021 but then we got attacked and everything got shut down and that kind of like pushed us back for like eight six eight months and because i had to set up brand new corporations and tax ids and all that corporate stuff um but we got it back up by the end of 2021 and everything's kind of like running um pretty smoothly but i don't i don't advertise i uh, i don't we have like a it's just like five man crew and we're all part timers on it and um yeah we uh we uh we do it ourselves uh we infuse. I got crystals laying around. I got energy frequency machines just infusing it. We got people praying over the medicine. Um, uh, we play music and um, to it, and it's you know it's 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 a small little group of like very high vibe people, and and uh, we do our own packaging and and um, and uh, some of the sourcing they come in, and we just kind of like repackage everything and and. Um, um, labels and packaging and the fulfillment is done right here from so Southern California. And, uh, and it's, you know, um, I don't advertise on, um, on, there's no Googles, there's no Facebook, Facebook, um, and Instagram, like banned starseedfuel.com. It might be all right now, um, to send on a DM, um, but you couldn't even send it on a DM, like, like, like 
in 2021. <laughs> it was like, it was crazy. Anyways, um, so yeah, that's kind of like um, a quick little summary of like how I came about and then, you know, just just everything. But I, I, I've been I've been feeling really good, um, you know, just watching the 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 Great Awakening show and <clears throat> how everybody's waking up right now and and um and uh it's 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 actually a really beautiful thing to watch even though there's a lot of hardships and tragedies and traumas and um it's 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 it, 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 it's very difficult times for a lot of people right now even even like the newly conscious or newly awakened conscious folks you know they they're trying to figure it out they haven't um you know they 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 might still be in the dark night of the soul it's, you know it's just, it's um all the way from like the complete unawakened to the very awakened and everything in between is is it's just a wild thing to watch on a whole collective spectrum <laughs> yeah if i i mean wild wild is an appropriate word thank yeah. you so much that was especially for your vulnerability and sharing a lot about the grief in your journey um, and just and sh sharing what got you here. That's it's a long journey. It's a lot. And, you know, two things I want to I want to say something and then I want to ask you to dig into something that was really coming through strong. First and foremost, I just want to like acknowledge, you know, a huge part of of my story and, and of our story is addiction. And for me specifically, heroin. Um, I was thinking about it, I was like, how long do I have? Heroin specifically, I have just over wow. 10 years. And the person that I was with before this guy passed away of an overdose. And so it's just, it's a really um, big part of my story. And I really advocate, you know, for bringing awareness to that and um, just want to send some love, you know, to you and all the people out there that are affected by, you know, by that. And just thank you for, you know, carrying on that person's memory. You know, both of your friends you mentioned, it seems like you're doing really really beautiful things to honor them. One thing I want to really dig into is something you touched on a couple of different points in your story. And I think, you know, those of us on our awakening journeys, you know, we kind of can relate and laugh about it. And people who are new might be kind of in the thick of it is when you are waking up, you know, you've got this kind of like double-edged sword of you feel like you're going crazy and you think that, you know, you're going crazy. And then you've got everybody externally who's not ready or can't receive that information telling you you're crazy or you're in a cult or you're on drugs or, you know, whatever it may be. And we've been seeing this theme come up a lot lately. And as you said, you know, great awakening, right? That's the, that's what's happening right now. And I would really love because we're seeing such a massive, I mean, we were talking about the other day, right? It's like popcorn. Like it's just massive amount of people waking up and they're going zero to a hundred because they're waking up in this climate. Like those of us that woke up three, five, 10 years ago, we've had a lot of time to digest everything. <laughs> you, every, yeah. yeah. Like we've had time and I'm wondering, you know, any advice or even just thoughts or personal experiences, all the above that you can share for people who are at whatever point in their awakening journey, kind of navigating that because, you know, waking up is challenging. Waking up right now, I can't, I can't relate to that. I imagine that's incredibly challenging. Um, but then having, you know, you think you're going crazy, you think the world's going crazy, and then everyone tells you you're crazy. Um, I think you've probably got a really great, a lot of really great wisdom. And so I would just love to hear you chat, chat about that a little bit. Um, yeah, well, first of all, the, your heroin story is kind of, is, is kind of crazy. And there's, there's another synchronicity because I had no idea. And mm -hmm. we haven't even talked about my friend, Andy, who's actually my, one of my guides now. He's, he, he's always around and there's this specific, um, thing that he has and that pops up all the time around me. And I can tell that when he's around me and, and, and everything. So he's definitely an angel and a guy around me. And um, and that's what you need to, uh, for those that have lost somebody, they, you know, that that energy, that energy, um, there's a core between that, you know, between you and that person, which is one energy to another source of energy and and, uh, and everything. Anyways, uh, but yeah, um, and 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 the, and the drugs thing and, and heroin is one of the most heaviest um uh, uh, deepest hooks you know addiction is just a bunch of hooks that's just like locked in you and you literally have to like just pull them all off one at a time 
It's um, like in, it's like, it's like a hook. I felt like directly into the soul, my experience, you know, not speaking for others. Yeah. yeah. My, mine is, he's also one of my guides. So I find that really interesting. That's really beautiful. Uh, uh, his name was Anthony. And so the A's too, like a lot of synchronicities oh, yeah, there. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and now, you know, you know, it's the awakening now it's very very heavy for for those that are just getting it you know um because whatever is causing the person to wake up now it's going to be um what i call like a rude awakening and and it's going to be some heavy trauma or tragedy um that is allowing them to wake up um and um and I know this sounds kind of like rough or 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 um to say, but some people might not make it, you know, to to the end of this movie or to the end of this uh, this path, this this uh this journey. So and I'm not saying like it is is this person or this type of person that's gonna make it or not gonna make it. That's not up to me to say. It's not up to anybody to say. We all have our own journeys and we all have our own destiny or whatever life we're, we're mission that we're supposed to do here at this time and um and there's there's people that are finding out that they might not have a certain type of life that they did or that they wish they did um they might you know it could be a woman that is in her mid-40s and she wanted to be a mom or have a family she might not be able to she's coming to that uh, realization that she might not have that life anymore you know um somebody might be getting sick somebody might have like an accident um there's a lot of tragedies out there it's very difficult um for people to understand and, and come to realize what and come to grips of their their own reality right now and it's not what they thought it was you know and especially for like the very unaware folks that are realizing, you know, they drank the wrong Kool-Aid. They they made this mistake. They fell into this trap. They fell into something else. Something else was pulling them down. They had, you know, it, it could be like a, a whole slew of reasons of whatever that situation that is bringing them to that self-realization of a, a, of a very heavy and difficult self-realization of what's going on with their lives. So for those that are going through that, those events it's really like coming to grips of like making the most of what you have in the present moment um even if you're laying in 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 uh in hospital beds um whatever it is you might be the story or the inspiration for somebody else now or for somebody um for for somebody else uh could be your friend could be could be like a, a story there's there was um there was that girl that was she had the burn she went viral right now um they she's from like california they went to she went to the hospital i think in irvine i believe in irvine i forgot her name though sweet sweet looking girl she went to the hospital for some i think i think i believe it was a burn and in order to treat her, they gave her three vaccines all at the same time. And she had like this crazy breakout. It, it, the story went viral. And now she's just kind of like going through it. And it, it looked horrible. It looked like hell, to be honest. Like her eyes was put, like she looked crazy. Um, crazy. Like, and I mean crazy, like just horrible. And I'm not like knocking her by, by any means or, or diminishing like her pain or anything like that. It's really, really horrific. And um, um, and now she has to live, well, she has to live through this experience and then she has to live through, you know, this healing process. And she may not, may or may not heal back to, you know, this whole ordeal before this um, experience. So whatever that, however she got there, now she has to go through um, this awakening phase and this new life that she has to embrace and how does she embrace it? I'm only using her as an example. There's a whole lot of people that are out here in the matrix world that are going through these really, really like 
intense situations and difficult uh, 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 situations. So now it's like, how how do you live and how do you you know what I mean? Like it's 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 realizing like what is your what is your mission here, and and um, and hopefully like you know there's still a lot of people that are not that extreme as far as like going through difficult times and difficult situations and life situations. Um, so when you when you're in that you know life or death situation you become very spiritual pretty fast you you know you're all of a sudden you might be praying to god if you never did pray to god you know you might find a religion you might find jesus you might find whatever spirituality that's in your heart that's connected to your family and all of a sudden like none of this other matrix illusion stuff is important what's important is what's in your soul who you're with what who do you love who loves you and all of these things, you know, and and just living in this moment, like being in gratitude, coming back to like who you are, why you're here, what is your purpose, and what can you do for others, even if you're in a hospital bed. Like right now, you know, like even that girl in in, uh, in Irvine, she's inspired a whole lot of people. And not only that, she's also awakened a whole lot of people to this, you know, um, these potential injuries from big pharma and and, uh, and all these things so there's there's a whole lot of all these like multi-layers that's going on because everything's connected to everything and um uh, so hopefully there's you know a lot of people that are watching this are not going through heavy really dense life or death situations but also like the newly awakened ones that are like okay my friends think i'm crazy my things my friends think i'm i'm in a cult I've actually got my friends, you know, more jokingly and stuff. They think I started a cult. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, I'm like, I just post stuff all day long. Cosmic Light Force might be the coolest cult I'm a part of. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, I don't, you know, I'm like, I think I got this cult thing wrong because I'm the one that's giving out money and and, and medicine for free. Like I haven't been charged. I haven't got anything <laughs> coming in yet. That's like my number one question when people when people say that people say that to us about us a lot, especially my family. And it's like, do you do you even know what that means? Like it's it's wild to me. Yeah, I'd say you're doing the cult thing right, if <laughs> anything. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, man. Uh, but anyways, so you have uh, all these people. That are that think you're going crazy. Um, you might even think you're going crazy. You might be going through a dark night of the soul. You might, you know, um, realize that you got to start eating healthier. Um, you might not your appetite. People's, you know, when consciousness raises, uh, uh, food changes. You know, at, at different levels of consciousness. So you might not want to eat this type of food that you um, was eating before. Um, the type of information that you was absorbing or the type of in, uh, entertainment you was, uh, you know, watching and stuff, all of that is slowly, cha slowly changing or maybe rapidly changing because everything is fast right now. It's, 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 it's quantum fast right now. So when these things are happening, um, it's just calming down. Same thing with everything. Just come back to your present moment and just sit and be with yourself that was why COVID was such a big um, awakening phase for so many people because they had to sit down and sit with themselves. And in the matrix, you know, especially in the corporate world, we're always like, go, go, go. Where, where are we going next? What's, you know, um, everything's about a deadline. I need this yesterday. This, you know, I need this right now. Everything's like all, you know, instant microwave society like everything is right now right now right now and it's move 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 push 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 you know um the phrase you can sleep when you're dead you know what i mean like all these things is just to get you get you to uh go and and and, and run that hamster wheel as fast as you can so when you're coming into this realization and awakening and self-awareness of yourself you, you got to do the opposite and just chill and just be and just be calm, be still, be in peace and 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 really like fix your body because the body 
mind body spirit complex is your whole is this is your whole computer but also vehicle to move around this quantum realm and a lot of us you know and I, I, i'm older now i just i just actually turned 50 this weekend and a lot of us have not fixed or 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 like service their body in years and possibly decades. So imagine if you had like if you had like a a 1990 Jeep Cherokee and it's never had a oil change, it's never had a tune up, spark plugs, tires are ball, brakes are bad, like you know, uh, the tubes and the um, the belts are all rusty like it's it's bad like a lot of people are in bad bad condition and you guys still want to drive cross-country road trips and do this and do that and all these things and it's crazy it's it's, it's right now it's about fixing the body we're moving into a healing error and phase and it's like okay look i've been eating like i've been eating like horribly um, eating the wrong type of food at the wrong time. The water is bad. Everything is bad. The clothing is bad. Like what I'm ingesting, the Wi-Fi, like all, like everything has just been like bad. So now it's like we gotta we gotta come and counter these things. And that's really like where we, you know, um, where you gotta all these things that people are learning now grounding earthing you know we're bio bioelectromagnetic beings and who we are and you know uh, uh drinking like alkalis living water eating living foods and eating good foods clean foods you know not processed stuff and you know like like these things so all these things it, it takes it, it takes some time to really like be able to plan you know, and, and and even eating and cooking, it's it's that, that's a whole sacred process because you're putting food inside your body. You know, for a woman, if you're just allowing any man to come inside your body, that's like even in the matrix, you know what I mean? Like they, they got all kind of like horrible names for that, you know what I mean? Like calling calling a woman that, you know. So if you so now you it's not just for women, you're putting stuff in your body. You know, like a woman just wouldn't sleep with any, well, a decent woman wouldn't just sleep with any guy. You know what I mean? Like, so um, now you wouldn't just put anything in your body. You know, like that's that's a really sacred, I don't want to say ritual because then we're getting back into the cult thing and stuff. But like, it's it's a routine. It's a thing that you do, you know, from like the energy who prepares your food is even um, important. And that's why I really don't even eat out too much these days because you might get a guy that's, you know, chopping or cooking up your food and stuff and he might have like a bad day because he just found out his chick just cheated on him or da da da. you know what I mean? Like he's like horrible and he's out there just struggling and stressing and, 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 and just working because he has to pay the bills. And he's and he's mixing and touching your food. <laughs> I'm not saying that's 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 like the scenario every for everybody that prepares food and stuff. And um, and it's not, but I'm just saying that that could be. So it's really important, like who <clears throat> the source, the source of medicine, where it's coming from. When you look at medicine and you look at big pharma, I mean, these guys are like just like the worst of the worst, and, and it's the lowest frequency. And um, and these are the people that everyday people go to for when they get sick and absorb this, you know, consume this type of medicine that is like the greediest and not even the greediest. Like, like that's like <clears throat> that's like the 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 common layer, like greed. It, it starts from there. Then it gets into like really, really dark, you know, um energies when it comes to like big pharma medical industrial complex and we, we go into like really deep rabbit holes um you know talking about that and but just the stuff that rfk is talking about right now and the the chemicals and everything like like people are waking up to these things and, and, and it is a beautiful thing to um to see but you know the, the advice right now is just 
sit sit by sit by yourself and really like figure out who you are. Oh, going back to COVID and people understanding why it's um why it's such a great awakening right now is because they're starting to figure out who they are because they finally had a time to sit by themselves. A lot of people don't know who they are because we've always been on a go. And I, I, I say this to like a lot of um, women and moms. And I'm like, especially like um, a popular girl um, or like a pretty girl or just, you know, just in, any female, but especially like the popular ones, the, the social butterflies, they've been, they've been having people come to them from families and friends since like they were like in elementary school. And then as they grew up and, you know, guys, uh, uh, boys starting, you know, liking them since middle school and then high school and then, you know, college and, and, and they're just popular. So girls, they got their girlfriends, they got guys all around and then work and, you know, all these things. And, and these girls that, you know, they might marry, they might have a boyfriend, they might live with the boyfriend, then have a kid. They've never spent no real time by themselves and they don't know who they are. And a lot of guys are like that too. I'm not just, I'm just saying like girls is really like extra because girls are magnetic. You know, they just have that energy that is it's just pulling everything around them and stuff. And not just the pretty ones, just a feminine energy in general is 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 magnetic and and having that magnetism and not understanding boundaries and energy is just always interacting always interacting always in a circle i mean uh, uh, in that wheel and just moving 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 and all of a sudden you're like 40 years old you got like three kids you're like you know possibly divorced or going through it or realizing like that's not the guy i want to be with and she's figuring out who she is right now or trying to figure out who she is right now because she's never had no alone time. And that's why I like, and then, then the matrix called this midlife crisis. They already got a term for this because you've already worked 20 years at, at a corporate job and then you got fired because they can pop in somebody else, replace you, you know, and, and spit you out like you're nothing. And so everybody just loses it. And so they, 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 Give you this jacket to put on, so you so you don't think you're you're, you're going that crazy. Oh, oh, I'm not the only one. It's called a midlife crisis. Everybody else is going through this. You know what I mean? So you you feel like you, I might be going crazy, but there's a lot of people going crazy. You know what I mean? So it makes you feel <laughs> misery loves company, uh, yeah. uh, uh, type mentality. But a, a lot of these middle age. And I don't I, that that's a, even a horrible term too, and that's a matrix term. But people that are like living a few decades into their life now are starting to realize, like, hey, who am I? Because I was just working this corporate job. That really wasn't who I am. You know, when you say like, what do you do, or who are you in the matrix? I'm a designer. I do this. I'm a fireman. I'm a police officer. I, I'm a teacher. You know what I mean? Like, these are jobs that you do. That's not who you are. You know what I mean? Like, you got to learn and figure out who you are. Once you, when you figure out who you are, like, who, like, what do you like? What do you like to do? Like, and I'm not, I don't mean like, hey, uh, let's go to Disney or watch a movie. Like, outside of as a being, as an energetic soul, who are you and what are you doing here? Mm. You knew what you was doing here coming in here. Those are the forgot. exact two questions that that got me waking up like many, you know, four or five years ago. I started asking myself, who am I and what the hell am I doing on this planet? And yeah. not like like actually like what am I doing here? Who put me here? But like what am I contributing here? <laughs> You're not here to work in a cubicle, pay taxes. So a bunch of pedophiles, satanic pedophiles in DC. <laughs> That's not it. Fun wars. It. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I I really appreciate the pun intended, the holistic response that you have provided for people because it really is a challenging time for those who are waking up right now. The gap of consciousness, you know, jumping from the matrix to kind of where the base level of the awakening consciousness is it's a much higher gap to jump right now. And so, 
you know, we see these waves of people that started to wake up in 2012. Um, you were one of them. And then the, the next big wave was around the COVID era. And then there's the now time, you know, and it's interesting to see because people have different thresholds of what it takes to wake up. And I believe that the people who woke up back in 2012 really paved the way and the foundation and really took on that um, the brunt of the you're crazy, you're in a cult, you know, back when all of this information was not readily accessible or um, accepted either. And so thank you for doing that journey and for laying the groundwork for the rest of us to come afterwards. You know, the people who woke up in the COVID area, era, in the COVID era, like you said, was typically surrounded from a lot of grief. You know, that's that's how our story started. It's interesting that your, your awakening journey also started with grief, but there's typically this experience of peak suffering, which for in the matrix world, like you said, it's some sort of a midlife crisis or some sort of a catalytic moment. From a consciousness perspective, a lot of people call it the dark night of the soul, but really what it is and what I've come to understand it to be is God kind of ringing a bell, calling us back home to remember who we are. And when we fall asleep in this dream, and this matrix of this life that we're living, it's so challenging when we're wrapped up in it to see truth. And it takes a great deal of suffering to kind of like, reset our system and make us ask questions because when we're comfortable and when we're living in kind of peaceful bliss of ignorance then we're not asking questions but when we're in a state of suffering we have the drive to ask why and when we're in that moment that catalytic moment we have a choice and you said it perfectly it's, it's about finding gratitude it's about finding the purpose as to why this experience is happening and how we can utilize to, it to serve ourselves in our awakening journey and to serve others through lessons. Because if we use that catalytic event to just dive deeper into our suffering, to dive deeper into victimhood, then all we're doing yeah. is kind of saying, no, not yet, creator. I'm I'm not ready to, to awaken yet. I'm not done with this dream. I'm gonna need a larger lesson. And so that's what we're seeing now with yeah. the with the greater collective is these larger lessons coming through. And it's it's really challenging to see sometimes um it's our different. brothers and sisters suffering and, and experiencing these events. But what you've provided in terms of in terms of the advice to really just sit and ground and take care of our vehicle, it really is the most important thing right now. It's taking wow. care of our spiritual, emotional, and physical bodies from what we are taking in, you know, on a physical level with food. You know, it's something that Amaris and I are really passionate about is the food that we consume and the energy that is behind it. But that translates to everything in our life from to our yep. music to the entertainment, to the people we surround ourselves with. You know, we've been um, in this season right now of, of reevaluating like, okay, who who are we sharing our energy with? And is that supporting my highest good, their highest good? Or is it time to start um, really focusing in on, on the things that are important, which is our connection to source, our connection to ourselves, and then our ability to love other people? Yeah, I, it's beautiful. It's so true. One thing no. you were okay. really talking about, well, you were both touching on is about, you know, what we are consuming and, you know, information and, you know, all of the things going on right now. I stumbled across Cosmic Light Force, I want to say it was almost two years ago, year and a half, two years ago, somewhere in the start of last year when I got on Telegram. And I want to caveat this. If you are not familiar with Cosmic Light Force, I imagine many of the people listening to this will be because it's probably, it maybe gets shared there and that's where they'll hear about us. But if you're not familiar with it, Telegram, which is a an app, I don't know any other way to describe it, kind of like a messaging platform app that 
mm, depends on who you ask, don't come at me in the comments, is one of the better places to have truth and information. One of the least censored, I guess we could say, um, leagues above, you know, an Instagram or a Facebook and even YouTube these days. And so Telegram, Cosmic Light Force is your Telegram channel. So you join these channels and that is where, you know, information and articles and posts and links and all the things are shared. And it's still one of only three, I think maybe four channels that I don't have muted and I have pinned. You know, I check it every day. I'm almost every day. I'm really tapped into it. And I love so much what you've created here. And I, you're going to describe it much better than I would. So I'm going to pass it off to you to really talk about that venture and, and what you do with Cosmic Light Force. But for me, you know, what I've noticed is how holistic and authentic and really just kind of truth-based it is. Like it's not fear-mongering, right? It's not clickbaity. Like it's just and it's, sometimes it's not even anything. It's just here's articles, right? Here's links, here's videos, here's here's things like go do the research for yourself. And so I would definitely love to plug that for anyone listening. If you're not already a part of that, um, you know, I, I highly recommend because right now being tapped in to to community, to truth, to, um, you know, resources and, and real awareness, like where else are you going to get it, right? Google ain't going to give it to you. CBS and Fox News ain't going to give it to you. And so I, I literally feel like you're like my news channel sometimes. But number one, thank you for that. Thank you for that resource. It was very valuable to me a few years ago when I was really thick in trying to find the right information. Um, so I'd just love to hear from you, like your journey with Cosmic Light Force and, and what you offer and kind of what you have created with this, I feel, incredibly large community of people who are seeking truth and seeking the light and seeking more love. Well, thank you, uh, uh, both of y'all, and, and um, you know, it it all just kind of like came about, you know, like I, I came from Instagram and I was, you know, just doing silly posts and funny stuff, but I was writing about consciousness and that, and, and, and from there, I actually built a pretty decent following on Instagram on, on just consciousness and talking about Pleiadians and all these things, and, um, and, uh, when like when COVID hit, that's when more of the truth stuff was coming out, and um, and I was I was already getting shadow banned really really uh, hard. So um, then I found Telegram, and I was like, all right, let me you know, hopefully they. Don't... It was it was fairly new. Like I didn't even really know what Telegram was, and uh, so but I wanted to I wanted like a platform where it's like okay, just off to the side from everything which it was it was cool because I can I could share to I could send that link to somebody else and 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 still be like hey take a look at this and and not do it on in the DMs and stuff um and then Twitter at the time was was still under Jack and it, it was it was all the way back so so um so there was like really like nothing else um that became and then it became a thing like all of a sudden, like um, other channels. And Are you being people. modest right now? It kind of became a big thing. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, like. It's okay to be humble, but like, it's kind of a big thing. I, I just thought, well, <clears throat> I always like the Anon stuff, you know what I mean? Like the, the guy folk mass and, and everything. And, and, and uh, but I always say like, I'm, I'm like the fumble Anon because, um, I show my face. <laughs> I'm not anonymous. I'm like the oxymoron. You're the least anonymous person I know. Because <laughs> I, because I show, I, I, uh, I show myself, and I was, you know, because I came from Instagram, and you know what I mean. Like we're just like, hey, showing our best life. <laughs> um, so I was kind of like mixing that because I, I didn't know what that was, and then I started realizing like all these other channels, they, you know. Like they're all literally a non. <laughs> like they don't, you don't know who they are, and this and that, which is kind of like it, it. I feel like it turned out to a good thing now because, at least with me, it's like they know I'm a cannabis guy. They know I do this. They know I I do power immunity and star seed. They know I'm retired. I show my kids. I show like like all this stuff about me, and I'm like not some, you know some some paid infiltrator i'll that say is, it i'll say it for you psyop 
yeah, and it's authentic I'm... too. Like people, people want authenticity, right? Like we, we want to feel that connection. And, and when you're just reading a, a screen name that you don't know who it is, you know, it removes yeah, that humanity. It, it was, it was, um, it was, you know, th there's a guy that I, th that I follow. And in the beginning, he was completely anonymous, SG Anon. I, I don't know if you guys know of him and stuff. And yeah. Um, about like maybe like a year or two years ago, he showed his face. He showed his face on, on one of the podcasts and, and, it, and a couple of times. And then he went back to being, you know, really like like behind closed uh, uh, screens and stuff. But when when I saw his face, I was like, oh, that was kind of cool. Like it, it, it's, it's like a cool thing. Like like uh, like I enjoyed it um, as far as like him revealing who he is and stuff. And uh I think it's a personal, it's a more personal connection, you know, like, like, like you can have with people um, when you kind of like show who you are. Um, and, um, and, and, and uh, yeah, I think that's, that's basically it. Like I enjoy seeing, I, I, I do enjoy seeing like the truthers that do show their face, you know, like Nino and no, I watch, I watch, I, I don't watch it all the time, but I do catch I like Jim Willie. I like David Wilcox. Uh, you know, a couple of these uh, um, truther guys. And um, but uh, it, it it's a it's been a flood of information. And and um, and I'm lucky that I have a lot of time on my hand. And um, and I still get paid. Um, I have a little you know a little reserve left from from the cannabis stuff. So I'm I'm, I'm okay. Um, and uh, I, I have a lot of time and I, I I was just like everybody else. I was just digging in and, and researching and, and, and sharing what I was, you know, finding. And, and, and it is, it's, it's a choose your own adventure right now. There are comms, there's so much stuff that is being dropped. You have like the basic like narrative, the mainstream narrative. We all know that's completely fake and lies and upside down, completely inverted. And then there's like this whole other operation that is being told like what's going on, what's happening, what's what's going to happen, all these things. We call them drops. I don't want to say that, you know, let's keep it very generic. We'll call them drops, that the drops and comms, military stuff that is like letting the people know that can piece these little dots together, puzzles together. And it does paint a, it it paints a a very clear picture, you know. And then there's like, and then there's this other layer layer thing. So I say movie one, movie two, and movie three. Movie three is the stuff that's going on right now that we have no idea what's going on, but we know that it's not what is being told. And then movie three um, becomes movie two because as time goes by, we're like, we knew that something is going to come from this. Like we knew the queen was dead years ago, or at least a couple of years ago. And then like, like her public announcement of the, her, of her death was going to come out. Like we knew that there's like certain things that were like these drops that, you know, from these anonymous channels, um, that kind of like gave us like a heads up. I told my one of my best friends um, and partner and and um, about this whole Puffy and Jay Z thing. I, in, I knew this was gonna come up. This is the next thing I was gonna ask you about. In, in, in 2022, I'm like, I think he's about to get cracked. Um, getting cracked meaning you know arrested, indicted, whatever you know. And, and I'm like, his empire is about to fall. And when I said when I said that this was like at the at the end of 2022, and then he tells me my my boy tells me he's like go to Instagram right now, and go go to his page, and when I went to his page on the stories, it was post the twins. I I guess it was like their birthday or I don't know if it's birthday or Christmas, but they had just received brand new Range Rovers. So they were all just partying. Oh, we got brand new Range Rovers, blah, blah, blah. And, and and God bless the kids too. Like I'm not I'm not you know trying to like dog the kids, but I was the point is of him telling me that it's like Puffs World. Like the girls just got the twins just got brand new Range Rovers. Like Puffs World is like bueno. 
It's awesome. It's great. Like, like he's infallible, you know, um, like, like whatever you're talking about, Drew, that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, yeah, you know, I, I, I get it, you know, plus on top of the world right now, you know, in 2022. And then it took one year later until like around the holidays, end of 2023, when, when the whole Tupac thing came out. And, and now we're seeing this whole thing unravel. And he's the first domino. Well, he's technically the second domino. You have Epstein and then him now, which is all going to connect all together because all of this connects worldwide really and um it's 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 just um but i i believe they're gonna use puff right now to because he's the face of the culture you know it's it's you know like uh, you can say like all these you know corporate fortune 500 ceos and you know chairmen of this and that like like the, the People don't know who they are unless you're like in finance or you you really like understand like the political realm and stuff like that. But the culture doesn't really get it. The pop culture doesn't really get it and stuff. The pop culture is starting to get it right now. And 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 and, and the first domino just fell for the culture, which is puff. And um rude awakening. All that, <laughs> and, and, and all the other stuff, you know. So all this false idol stuff, even like what Kanye was doing. Um, and um, I mean, like it's it's it now connects, which is kind of crazy, because even like with me, like, you know, when I was saying like all the satanic stuff and I'm like, oh, I don't want nothing to do with that. Here, here, keep the money, keep the thing. I, I'm just walking away from everything. I signed everything off. I didn't want none of it. Um, and it wasn't because like I was directly related to like people that were pedophiles or this and that i was just disconnecting from just the corporate world the matrix corporate world you know and and uh, and and even the guys i'm not even saying like the guys that i worked with was was bad or or, or did this or did, did that i'm not even i'm not even saying that man. i just i just wanted nothing to do with anything with the matrix and um and it, it took me a while to uh um to disconnect but it's 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 a lot coming out right now, and, and and there's a lot of realities being shattered. And and, and going back to uh, what you were saying, um, the sufferings, the sufferings will get greater and greater when you don't listen or follow it or or, or heed, you know, um, what life is throwing at you, what God is throwing at you, whatever you want to call it, whatever your spirituality is, you know, like um, tragedies. When you look at tragedies, tragedies are meant to bring you back or bring the people back to love and help. That's the two most simple things you can do, you mm -hmm. know, it's because if you look at Our favorite uh, word <laughs> for reals, uh, when you look at what's going on in uh, with the hurricane in, in North Carolina and Tennessee and God bless them and we pray for them and um and, and 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 but there's tragedies bring love to strangers you know i mean like people that you would never even think about now strangers are helping each other neighbors are helping each other um and loving each other um so and and, and it's a shame that it it takes these horrific sufferings and events to bring that that kind of like energy that love energy you know like um and our con <laughs> human consciousness affects collective events even weather and i i get there's you know weather manipulation and harps and, and and that all that rabbit hole stuff but we affect the the physical world um on a personal level we can affect our personal world um but collectively, we affect what's going on all around. Um, mm -hmm. And when you look at the emotions and the energy in the collective, it's fear, it's anxiety, it's hardship, it's suffering, it's pain, it's all, it's all kind of like lower, but it's also greed and theft and betrayal and all kind of negative emotions and energy 
spewing the cesspool, the swamp, you know. Um, so when you have that, you're going to have these events that are heavy, intense, difficult suffering. And that is coming up to teach everyone to be more loving and to be more helpful for one another. And that's that's it, you know, and 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 and, and it's sad that it, it it requires these extreme events to happen for you to, well, not for you, but just for people to find love or be loving towards one another, you know, and and that's the lesson here. And just to continue being that and, uh, and, and and do it more willingly and, and, and voluntarily. So you don't have to, you don't have to learn. Learn the hard way. (laughs) Yeah. The hard way. Exactly. I love so much that you brought it to love because obviously we love love here you know, going back to our original thing with Cosmic Light Force, thank you for a really beautiful channel. You know, um, check it out, listeners, if you're not already in it. It's a, a source I trust to get, you know, information and um, just really great, really great content that is like truth based and not fear based and all of these things. You know, something you're talking about is, you know, it's interesting when we were preparing for the show, we were like, man. This is this is teetering past that line for us of like we we here we talk about love and consciousness and healing and spirituality and anything that expands them right we really try not to focus on the truth stuff and the um you know the suffering and and world events and stuff like that and we were kind of talking about it and we were like you know are, are we gonna go there like are we are we gonna do this in this episode is this the one and we thought we were and I'm realizing and you know hearing it as you're talking it's something completely different. Um, and one other thing I wanted to caveat as well is we are not being vague by any means in some of these things we're saying. There's just some words we can't say or really shouldn't say. I think we've probably already said a couple of them we shouldn't say, but, you know, if it feels like we're being a little vague or we're kind of, you know, uh, Drew's dancing around things, it's, you know, we've got to be mindful of the specific words we use when we're talking about anonymous content and things like that. But I really want to hone in for this last section here on, you know, this love piece and this consciousness piece, because it's really easy right now for even me, but for anybody, no matter where you're at in your awakening journey, whether you're just waking up or you've been awake for 10 years, it doesn't matter. We're all equal, you know, inherently. And it's really easy to look at everything right now and be like, I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to believe. Like, I, I don't know how to help. Right. Like, and something you touched on that that's so, so profound is the power of consciousness, the power of us as quantum light workers, souls, you know, whatever, whatever you call yourself, we are, we are infinitely powerful. We are directly connected to source. We are source expressing itself, right? We have that God dust, if you will, in us. And we have beyond our wildest comprehension and imagination, we have dimensions of, of beings and ancestors and the Pleiadians and the Arcturians and the Andromedans and all of these different things, you know, they want help. And we've just, we are in the process of waking up and remembering, you know, how powerful we are. And so I really want to drive home love is infinitely more powerful than fear, right? And so as we're going through this, rather than focusing on all the stuff that's going on, and and you're right, the dominoes are falling, you know, Mother Earth is purging, the collective is purging, it's all happening right now, and, and it's intense. What can we do about it, right? I'd love to hear from your perspective. You know, you talked a lot about focusing on your body and all that, but specifically from the lens of love and consciousness, our two favorite words here, you know, how does that work? You know, how, how can we, I know the answer I'm just asking for the listeners, but like, how can we help right now? And how can we contribute to this greater mind and this greater quantum energy field, both tapping into it to, to help us, um, you know, as, as an ally and also what are we contributing to it? Like those are the, those I feel like is the kind of balance of the yin yang wheel of like leaning on all of the support that we have out there and and accepting receiving right and then giving love and consciousness and healing back to that space so wherever direction you want to take that in but just 
kind of really honing in on that love and consciousness piece right now because I truly feel like that's kind of the only thing we can do right now. It's it, 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 yes, absolutely. It's 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 very important, you know, um, what you just talked about, and um, for like the 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 newer um, awakening folks right now, um, it's 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 all about balance. Um, when we when we wake up or when we get aware of something, we kind of like want to share it, um, and uh, and that's fine. If, if if you're sharing it with somebody that is um, in resonance with you um, or is ready to receive it, like you said, that's great. Um, but you, you can't force anything. Um, you know, it goes back to that phrase, you can't force the, the horse to drink the water. You can lead the horse to the water. You can't force them to drink it. And um, so it's that. It's, it's this ebb and flow. Um, back to playing beautiful music in in uh, in your whole world. Now, music, there's a tone. There's like this this beautiful tone, like in this present moment. Um, and there's a lot of different tones. And, and, and we can talk about even like the, the 528 hertz and the love frequency, uh, 432s, the healing frequencies, and all these other uh, uh, beneficial frequencies, music frequencies um, that is good for the, the human body. Now, when we talk about love, that is a tone, but that's not just a tone. It's like everything. It's literally like the tone and the energy that has created everything. Literally like it's everything happening all at once, all dimensionalities. Um, and to really break it down, like how massive and powerful it is, this so the matrix, the corporate matrix is this. Then you have like the 3D third density matrix, which is the, you know, that encompasses the whole corporate matrix. This third dimension that we live in, it's still like 1% of all reality, everything of it in existence. So imagine like we live in like, a massive mansion, a hundred bedroom mansion. And you've, you're like 35 years old now and you've only lived in that one bedroom. You've never even seen the other bedrooms. Excuse me. Um, you've never even seen the other bedrooms. So now when you come out this other bedroom, you're like, whoa, I thought the bedroom was the whole, my whole entire world. And now it's like, not only that, it's there's something more. There's like all these other rooms in here that you're gonna be discovering. So, um, and that gets overwhelming and even scary because we come out of this corporate matrix, this third dimensional matrix that is all fear mongering, pumping, and um, and it is a war. This Let's not kid ourselves. We are at war. There's biological weapons. There's physical weapons. There's all this real war in in the Middle East right now, and other places in in in, uh, in the world. Um, food is poisoning us. All, you know, indoctrinations, information, all these stuffs. We are at war, and you have to counter it like you're at war. And um, so. And you don't fight fire with fire. You fight fire with water. So if there's like all this hate and betrayal and all these like greed and and um, and theft and just all these negative things, you have to literally be the opposite of that. And 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 coming back to love and and um, and generosity and kindness and mindfulness and being in your heart. Um, and then that's like your baseline. And then discovering this other 99 bedrooms that's in this realm that we live in. And then you realize that it is this love tone frequency that has built everything and putting it all together. So the ether, the sun, gravity, the wind, the uh, elementals, earth, like it's all literally um the co is coded by love our dna is, we're not separate nothing is separate so everything has been coded and connected 
through a love frequency. And when you flow through that and you move through that, it is the most powerful force of the, it is the only powerful, it is the only force in the universe. So when you flow against, uh, uh, I mean, when you flow with that, as that, there's nothing else that can, that can touch you. Literally nothing else that can touch you, especially when you're in a clear, fully charged body vessel. Like when you're driving a brand new Porsche, and it's gassed up, you know you're not going to break down. You can get to wherever you got to go, you know, like it's, you're straight, you're good. When you, when you know these certain things, there's like, you know, like, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's going on and you can, but you can maneuver around that. And, you know, comparing the body, the ship, the vessel to a Porsche is, is really like disrespecting this body and this vessel because we're way beyond a car, a vehicle, a spaceship even. You know what I mean? Like we're, we are the ultimate machine, literally designed. Like we're the ultimate machine. And I said, once, once you figure that out and once you understand what and who you are and who designed you and where you came from, and, and and what is the force behind you? It's 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 um it, it goes back to being in present and, and just you will have the highest peak level of gratitude and love and nothing can touch that. It's just mm -hmm. it's just physics. Like it you just can't like it is like trying to like go fly to the sun you're not you're not going to be able to reach it you just can't you just can't handle that and when you and that type of energy when you embody that energy that you know some people can call it christ consciousness some people call it god all these divine forces or source there's a lot of labels for it but when you embody that you also actually create a a magnetic field because we're magnetic beings. And then literally um, this Taurus auric field literally protects you from everything and anything. And you and, and you have this field, this shield field, and you can kind of like maneuver through it in this beautiful musical harmonious flow. Even when it gets bumpy, when it gets bumpy in, in 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 the collective, it becomes like a like an exciting ride for you. It doesn't become suffering and and, and fear and 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 um and difficult situations. You will everybody has to go through that um, in order to understand what that what that emotion is or what those lessons are. It could be soul contracts. It could be whatever reasons you had to go through. Um, for to 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 get to that, to get to get past those lessons. But once you get past those lessons, you're free. You're free to move around, and you're free to, um, you're free to execute the mission and purpose and serve the purpose you were here to do. Mm. That's beautiful. Thank you for that. As you're talking, you know we're always saying on the show we talk about love a lot. It's in every single episode we've ever created, we put that frequency in there and, and we've stuck to that, you know, love, loving, loved, lover, fall in love. Um, because it really is, it's everything, right? We always say God is love or the divine God source creator universe, whatever you want to call it. We celebrate and accept that here. It, yeah. it is love. It's pure love. You know, I always, when I envision it in my mind, it's like the universe is you know, this magical quilt and it's woven with, you know, these fibers of love, like the fabric of the universe is love. And when you, you're so right, like when you internalize that and you remember that love is all there is and love is the most powerful thing we can do right now. And so to our listeners who are, you know, navigating this wild, I think was the word we agreed on in the beginning, you know, wild journey right now, like 
just remember the love and remember that being in that frequency and and raising your consciousness, treating your body like the temple that it is, like all of these things, you know, it's so simple, right? Like we were talking about that, the answer, it's so simple and also so understated, like how important they are, how important love is and choosing love is and you know, incorporating more love into your life. And so thank you for sharing your your wisdom on that. Yeah, I mean, you you shared this little nugget earlier too, Drew, that gratitude is kind of the the pathway back to love from suffering, right? When we're experiencing those bumps and the rides, just because we're divinely protected doesn't mean that we're it's gonna be smooth sailing. Oh great, cool, no more lessons to learn in this plane. No, actually, what it means is that we are protected as we move through and learn these lessons. You know, we've had a really catalytic two weeks. And in that, we were able to hold the frequency of love and hold the frequency of gratitude. And, you know, as an example, we went in to get some trailer maintenance done and found out that our brakes were shot, you know, and rather than devolving into the, oh my gosh, you know, how how much of our time, how much of our money is being spent on on this experience and, you know, devolving into the negative um, emotions of like, okay, we had this plan, now we're not sticking to this plan, what's going on? Instead, it was more, wow, thank you, God, for getting us here safely. We didn't have any breaks, you yeah. know? And that's been such a common theme in our journey as we've traveled this country of showing up finding out about these things after they've happened and so many people are communicating to us like how are you even here right now you know and there's just always been this deep trust from both amorous and i in the divine guidance and the divine plan of where we're being kind of pushed and the more that we surrender into that the more that i surrender control of my own life i realize that from the time I was a child and, and when I was born into this world, I've always been divinely protected. Everything that I have experienced, all of the traumas, all of the, the, the addictions, the suffering, the um, all of these experiences have always been from a place of love to help me grow, to help me find myself. And so for those of you navigating these these times or those of you observing and supporting others during these times it's incredibly important to focus on that gratitude and focus on that love because when we know that we are divinely held in the arms of the creator there is nothing on this physical planet that can touch us right you look at gandhi who was imprisoned they couldn't imprison his mind and his spirit you know he was in a place of love you see some of these ascended masters that have experienced Jesus on the cross you know jesus on the cross forgive them yep nelson mandela like these people who have really and you even you like who have been imprisoned in this 3d realm when you are walking from a place of consciousness your soul is always free and that's the whole point we are free to choose love and gratitude and the truth of the universe, regardless of the external circumstances that we are experiencing at the moment. Mm, thank you so much for bringing that in, love, because I feel like that's just, it, it, it's, I'm actually speechless with it, but it's like so easy right now. I mean, even for me, I'll admit, I, I, I had told you earlier, I wasn't on Telegram all weekend. We had an interesting weekend in New York. You can hear about that in our last episode about surrender. Um, you know, and just navigating like some really intense situations. And so I couldn't take in any information. And I got back on today and I'm reading and it's like, you know, this bomb there and, and this death toll there and this explosion in Georgia. And it just, it's, it's intense right now. And I started crying, you know, just like I felt the collective, it was, it was a sadness of, like you said, you know, like that this is what it takes and and for the people, you know, going through what they're going through, because that that's very real. And as Eric's saying here, and as you've touched on and, and we've talked about all throughout this episode, we have the power. We have the power to choose love. And it's not being ignorant and it's not being, you know, woo-woo and and you know, just not facing reality. It's 
knowing that it's all perfect because it's all part of a bigger plan. And if I can just choose love and I can just stay aligned, everything else works itself out. And I can be in both. It's like the whole like be, you know, in the world, but not of the world, right? Like you can be in what's happening and you can have empathy and you can feel that. Like I, I healthily felt that earlier and I'm not of it. It's not who I am. I am a conscious quantum light warrior that is on this planet in service, you know, to the collective. And so choosing love is to me, it's the highest mission. I feel like it's kind of really, other than awakening and healing your stuff, like our, our tagline here at Loving Consciously is awaken, heal, love. And, you know, awaken, remember who you are, heal your stuff, right? All those blockages, your body temple, all the things. And then all you got to do is love. You just got to love. I, I like I like to add one more little thing you were saying, like, you know, just choose your um, your perspective or choose love you know, um, um, while you're going through these things. Um, I, there's an aversion where outer circumstances dictate how we feel or what we think so um if we get paid or you know something good happens to us we're in a good mood which is which is fine or then like if something bad happens to us it puts us in a bad mood and stuff you know and um and then so these outer circumstances dictate how we feel or dictate our frequency we become a puppet when we we live like a puppet when when we live like this so the inversion is it's always your f inner frequency that dictates the circumstance the outer situation it's never the other way around it's always from within so even if you're going through like all these things and you're saying like hey choose love choose these um higher emotions and higher energy um and and uh to hold this by doing that it will eventually manifest outwards and it will reflect outwards no matter what you're going through mm. no matter what you're going through um, thank you for that drew yeah do you want yeah. to add something before we close out yeah yeah i mean something that you mentioned that's really important too is you know we wa went to uh see book of mormon um, on Broadway in New York, which was a very interesting experience from a conscious lens because there was the kind of unconscious comedy at the surface level, but below that there was a, a narrative of consciousness um, kind of wrapped into the sarcasm of, of the play. They said and the word matrix. They said, yeah. And part of that was this, this scene in the play where they talk about shutting their emotions off. Right, rather than than feeling what's occurring, to just boop, choose a different reality, right? But they're and, doing it in the negative. But they're doing it in the negative in the sense of of bypassing, right? Because when we talk about choosing love from a conscious perspective, it doesn't mean just saying, "Oh, I'm feeling this emotion. I'm just gonna put right. that down, put it to the side, and choose love instead." Right? Fake it till we make it. It's actually feeling all of those emotions in their rawest form to the fullest extent that you possibly can. And then after allowing those emotions to move through you, then choosing love. Because when we choose to shut that stuff down and put it off to the side, yeah. it just expands and expands and builds with more intensity and until we feel it and it comes out in an explosion or a catalyst, right? And that's what we're seeing in this world is when people shove their stuff down and don't want to face it, it then has to manifest as an external experience of grief or addiction or whatever it may be to get our attention back to it, right? Because we've locked it in the closet of the 100, 100 room mansion and said, I'm never going to look in there again. It's yeah. It's actually the process of healing is and really living from a heart-centered coherent place is allowing those emotions to flow through you opening up that box and saying what's in here let me let me see that with love and what you were saying about you know not fighting fire with fire but rather fighting fire with water this beautiful human over here attributed it to fighting fear with love you know and and that's what depolarizes it and love is always a stronger that higher vibration 
emotion is always going to depolarize that negative emotion and bring us back into balance and back into into coherence. But the important part is to make sure that we are giving both of them center stage and not just focusing on the love from a denial perspective or just focusing on the fear from a, a really a fear-based perspective of like, oh my gosh, I have to deal with this survival mode. You know, it really takes both aspects. It's yeah. becoming the conscious awareness, right? Conscious awareness behind both. Uh, we, we're, we're natural alchemizers. You alchemize it. You actually like dissolve it, transmute it, transcend it, alchemize it, you know, like all this stuff that, you know what I mean? Like that's within you that you find unpleasant and um, and not to bury it, like you said, but to release it, release it and alchemize it and channel it into something else, you know, mm -hmm. uh, back to back to source, back to love, because once it if it stays in there, it manifests as something greater, something more unpleasant, more suffering, and 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 really turns into if it's in your body, which it always is, it turns into a disease in the future. That becomes other disease, yeah, like some some form of illness, aside from like just unpleasant manifestations, which a disease is. Mm. Yeah, I have one more question I want to ask you. What do you envision? And you can take this preferably all, but for you, for all of these amazing brands, which we will definitely have everything linked in the show notes. What what do you envision the future looks like here? You know, for Cosmic Light Force and Starseed Fuel, and for Drew, you know, as you're walking on your your quantum mission and doing your light work down here. You know, we 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 know. Well, we could never know. We could speculate, and that'd be a ten hour podcast. That's not this podcast on what could come in the collective. You know, I I don't know that that serves our energy best. So I'd love to hear where you envision it going on the positive end with, with the light and with all that you're creating and bringing into this world. I, I have like a, um, a very different perspective, but a, a perspective that is shared by a whole lot of people. Um, and I'm assuming with you guys too, is that I see this new earth coming in aside from like all this bad and horrible weathers and tragedies. There's like, there's thriving elements that's happening. There's magic happening. There's like people, um, there's more people awakening. There's more people unplugging. There's more people like, you know, withdrawing their money and not spending their money with like the old brands and the old companies. There's people that are becoming more sovereign and, and, and self-sustainable. They're starting their own gardens. You know, there's, there's um, I have friends that are, putting their kids, young kids, into forest school. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, they, a lot of people don't even know what that is. You know, yeah, like- I've never heard of it. Forest school is exactly what it sounds like. It's school. pretty self-explanatory. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So <laughs> it's, it, it's it's these things that is going on. And um, and, and and as far as myself, you know, like, um, um, I- I feel like, well, I sat down for like five years now just to really like um, just hunker down. I, I, I helped build a few homesteads um, all around like the West Coast and and um, and um, and even like um, because of Cosmic, um, I'm, I'm connected to a lot, a lot of people around the world now that are all in the same frequency um, soul tribes and, you know, doing the things, what you guys are doing, moving around. I, I know a lot of people that are getting RVs. I might get one pretty soon myself. Um, hey. and, and, yeah. And, and just really like, just move get around. Get a warranty. <laughs> right. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll be talking about that. And, um, so, um, I feel like my, my next phase is, um, is coming up and, um, I don't know if that's going to be like traveling around um, um, and uh, just kind of like doing my thing um, around the world um, or, or wherever I'm, I'm, I'm being called to. Um, so um, I'm, I'm kind of like just leaving that open. I, I have like several timelines that I see myself um, um, doing and, uh, and, and that's all. And, and, and all of that is open basically. As far as like star seed fuel, I, I, I think, 
I've had a lot of people that's offered to, you know, take it, take it to the next level. You know, I could do like natural shows and trade shows and do all these. And, and, um, and as of right now, um, I don't know if that's, that's going to be the path, you know, I'm not here, you know, I'm not trying to make it like, you know, just it, the, the, the next CVS or, you know, like, like, um, make a power immunity like the next airborne or you know whatever tylenol um everything has been word of mouth and and um and it is growing you know slowly but it is growing and um and uh i i think i think that's if it reaches people um through word of mouth and it's resonating th then and it is doing that so that goal is already accomplished, and if that goal can continue on, I'm I'm, I'm more than happy with um with that. You know, I don't, I don't need like everybody to like just go get it. I don't need to make a ton of money with it. I'm not I'm not even doing that. I, I'm actually like almost like all the money um that is coming in, uh, or at least like um aside from like floating the uh, uh the business, I've been giving out thousands of bottles. Um, especially like this year, um, and, and and especially like right now, I'm just giving out like bottles uh, for people in, um, in in school for the kids. You know this this whole flu season thing and all this stuff that they're you know putting in the air and and uh, and everything. So um, so that's kind of like um, where where I'm at, um, and just just coordinating, you know, quarterbacking some of these um, some of these. Um, missions i guess I, I don't know whatever <laughs> i'm just i'm just kind of like flowing so yeah. that's that's, I, that's what I'm at. <laughs> thank you for that i i can't wait to see where you go with it and i relate so deeply to what you were saying and i think a lot of people can right now like it's a beautiful thing to close us out on you know the possibilities are endless like having the multiple timelines like we're especially this last i don't know if you've had this experience but this last like 7 14 days with all these eclipses and all this energy like god god source is is, today There's literally a... right now we're recording this on the new tomorrow. moon mm -hmm. yeah. i think yeah. it's probably happening one or two of the events are happening while we're talking but right now <laughs> yeah, yeah the the energy is so potent and and everything's opening up and we're seeing timelines we've never seen before and missions we've never seen before. And so remaining open to that possibility and, and bringing it full circle with what you were saying, you know, Drew, about like, yes, there is great suffering right now. I can't even I can't even tap into it without getting emotional. Like, yes, there is a great purge there. It, it needs to happen. You know, it's happening. It's there's war, there's famine, there's, and it's, it's going to, it's going to get worse before it gets better. It has to, it's, it's, it just has to, and it all has to come out. We got to purge it out. We got to get the pus out. We got to clean out the wound and then we can move forward. However, in that, right, as that's happening, there's so much magic. There's so much beauty. There's so much power being brought back to the people and and you know like i was scrolling instagram the other day this is a perfect example i don't do politics i don't vote however i was scrolling and i saw a video by rfk and he was talking about you know um just all of the different just straight up corruption and poison that is the american food system and i'm like this is like the right hand of a running you know presidential candidate like talking about things that no well, one has ever talked about like it's three platforms now yeah. i, I want to curse so bad like it's so freaking awesome to like see that and see you know yeah. just what we're seeing you know the fluoride like on cnn and cbs and fox news they're talking about how fluoride's bad and i'm like i don't care and then you get the people that are like oh it's a sign but i don't care it's on the news like this is good yeah. this is yeah. Yeah. getting out there and my my point is you know there's so much beauty to see and and the veil, you know, the last thing I want to give to our listeners here, like the veil is so thin right now, whatever that means in your perspective, take it down whichever way you need to, to, to feel good about it. Like, it's so thin right now, like the universe is is being reborn, we are ascending, we are being born into fourth density, heart based consciousness, we are becoming beings of the light. If you imagine a spectrum, you know, um, one end to one end. I don't want to number them because it doesn't matter. But this end is matter and this end is spirit. We've been we've been living over here and, and we're moving this way. And, you know, telepathy and all these like gifts and just like the potential 
it is quite literally infinite and endless because we are infinite and endless quantum beings of, you know, anything we can create, anything we can imagine, anything we can dream, we can birth. And so you find yourself, you know, as you're navigating all of this, hold on to that, hold on to the love, hold on to the light, hold on to consciousness, lean on your community, lean on your resources, treat your body like the temple that it is, all of these things. But most importantly, know like anything is possible, right? And we get to create that right now. We are, those of us that are awake, we are charging the way of building the new earth. And yeah. that is really, really cool. And I would love so much to see you know, more people focusing their energy on that and, and not on, you know, all the other stuff. Not that it's not important to be aware, but like, let's really come together. Let's come together in love. Let's come together as a family of light and let's push that forward. Let's, let's push that timeline forward because I'm really excited. I'm getting, I'm getting images of it all the time, you know, of us like, like mm -hmm. levitating and telepathically talking and like all these things when we've, become of the light and we become a more spiritual race and I'm, I've always been we've always been team humanity and so wherever you are you know whatever you're listening to like hold on to that because it's powerful it's real love wins it all it already has won you know this is this is just it needs to play out but the end of the movie it's already done so Drew thank you so much for being here I'm I'm honored to have you know we're honored to talk to you and and to know you now and you know, cosmic light force, star seed fuel. We didn't get into higher self made much, but that's your, you know, um, CBD line and, and all those different products. So we'll plug all that in the show notes and just sending you so much love as you continue on your journey. And thank you for being vulnerable. Thank you for sharing your light with us. Thank you for sharing your wisdom with us. We're just so grateful. No, thank you. This has been a, a really um, beautiful but insightful um, exchange. You know, like it was, it was very... Um, there's a lot of gems in here, um, and, and and what you guys are doing is is uh, is great because um, there's not a whole lot of um, fem feminine and masculine like relationship um, podcasters and and just bringing it from a um, from a from a dualistic side, you know, perspective from both sides to. Mm -hmm. uh, um to this so that's great and, and and i really appreciate what you guys are doing i love what you guys are doing and and uh you know we're just gonna we're just gonna keep rolling and flowing i appreciate know? that reflection brother thank you so much you know yeah. for yeah. those of you listening don't play it small keep you keep your minds open because i can tell you over the last couple of days it's taken a lot of conscious presence to really slow myself down not run on the rat race myself um and in slowing down and really focusing on my connection with the divine so much information has flown in there's so much energy being transmitted to us right now and we have the power to birth it into this reality and so regardless of who you think you are right now what you think your purpose is right now Take some time to just really sit in, drop in with yourself and listen, because I can almost guarantee you that you're meant for way more than what you think you are. And you have the capacity to step into that role and really make a difference in this world. Mm. There's no greater time to be alive. Am I right? Like this is such a gift and we get to we get to write it. We get to choose choose our story. So choose wisely, friends. Choose love choose the light and drew thank you so much again you know keep keep pushing on keep fighting the good fight <laughs> thank you